Good morning. I am here with Erin Stremka, and she has just written her first book, Power Up, and we are going to chat about it today and get to know Erin a little better. So Erin, thank you so much for spending the morning with us. We really appreciate it. It's so nice to have you here. We would love for you to just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first, thank you so much um, for having me here. I truly appreciate it. Um, so a little bit about me. I am a uh, Scottsdale resident. I live in the North Scottsdale area. Um, by day, I am a marketer, uh, nine to five. That's my, my day job on top of being a mother, which is my, my nighttime evening job. Um, and then now author, um, which was my, we'll call it my COVID job, right? Um, right. Most of this, <laughs> on top of everything else, I used to be a glutton for, for overload. Yes. Um, so, but why not, right? Um, it's for a good cause. So um, I have two boys. Um, one is nine. That's my youngest, Landon. And my oldest is 11, um, Parker. So those are really the two that inspired this entire journey. And, um, you know, that joy, those, you know, those moments of joy and craziness and pulling my hair out, you know, are all inspired by them as, as so many things are right in our lives with our kids, at least. Yeah. Good and bad. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I, um, my middle guy is nine and I, I love that age. It's such a great age. I feel like They've just gotten independent enough where you can really have them do a lot of their things on their own, but they're still like, they're still your kiddo. And so yeah. it's just a sweet, it's a, it's a sweet time. So yeah. that's awesome. Well, um, I know, um, I see your book behind you power up. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So everybody, you know, what book to look for on the bookshelves. It's right there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, tell us, I know, um, I know a little bit about it, but I would love to have you tell us about, tell us more about it. Tell us more about yeah, affirmations absolutely. and yeah. Yeah. So it first all started, I wrote the book um, for my son when he was 10 and I started scouring, you know, the bookstores looking for something, you know, that was positive and motivational um, for that first decade in your life. And, you know, I got a little frustrated that I wasn't finding, you know, really what I wanted, something that would fit his age and that he would be able to connect with. So um, I went on, you know, love book. Here it is. Here's the first edition of the book. A um, <laughs> little different than what's over there. Um, but I went on love book and I just started writing it. And then as I started to see him really using it as a tool, you know, that it would move. It was sitting on his nightstand. So I know that it really meant a lot to him. Right. It was, you know, 10 affirmations of you are loved and you'll get through this and you are strong oh. the moments that he could, when I'm not around to say those things that he could self indulge in, you know, that, that power, right. His own power of that self-talk. Um, it's so important. I find in my own life when I'm down or upset or sad, um, that I have the power within me to, to get myself motivated and to get myself going. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe my kids need that too. Um, so he started using it. It would move from his nightstand to his bed, to the floor or, you know, various places throughout his room. And that's when I noticed, I'm like, wow, this kid's really using this thing. Right. You know, you're onto something when yeah. it's not something. just sitting there. Yeah. It's not just sitting there. Um, you know, and, um, then I started thinking, I'm like, okay, well, if he's using it. And then I started to see him sharing it with his friends. He was proud of it. Like, look what my mom wrote. And then wow. I started asking them, you know, the kids that would come over um, in our close group and say, well, what do you think about the book? You know, do you like it? And, you know, the overarching response was, yeah, I do actually like it. It makes me feel good. You know, it makes me feel good. They're, they're happy, feel good things, you know, and I think with kids right now, um, so much that they've been through, right, all of us. Uh, over this past year that, you know, now is the time. And I sat on it for a while. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I was like thinking about it, praying about it. And it just kept reoccurring. Aaron, just get it down on paper, just get it down on paper. And, and what will come if it's the right thing will come. And it did. I mean, it just, the doors opened and um, I just pushed through. I found my way. I started teaching myself. I'm like, I can do this. <laughs> I was reading my own affirmations. <laughs> I love that. Cause I think there is something about that, that when, when there is something that you're passionate about first, 
something yeah. that you see making a difference. And then when there is that still small voice that keeps saying, do this, do this. And it's like, all right, I'm going to do it. And what happens happens. And that's a really special moment when you see it all come together now. Yeah. You revisit the affirmation, you can fail several times <laughs> in your own book. It's true. <laughs> it's so true. I think, you know, it's not just for children. I think adults that are reading it too find an aspect, you know, as I was writing it even and editing several times, right? And going through it, I'm like, oh, wow, I really need to say I'm sorry. Or, oh, wow, I really need to forgive, you know, or just those things, you know, that are inside of it that are just reminders to to yourself, you know, to your children and to your family. Um, it's so important. And it's all, it's all up in here. This is the voice that's so much, so much more important than anything else um, that you listen to. There's so much negativity that you got to put a barrier up around yourself and your voice is, is that barrier. I truly believe that. Yeah. And I think there is so much negative that we can just get sucked into right now. It could be the news. It could be arguing with a friend or a family member about opinions on things. Yeah. But if we take the time every day to really re-examine, you know, what, what it is we're saying to ourselves, what it is we're, you know, letting consume our thoughts, I think, and being an example to our kids for that right now, because I know it's really tempting to get lost in the Facebook scroll. Or if you turn on the news for a minute, all of a sudden it turns into two hours that you're watching the news. Yeah. And it's like, they, they don't, they don't need that noise. The noise that they need is what we yeah. show them about how to do life and how to get through a, one day at a time. Absolutely. It's all about, you know, what you see and what you hear and being so careful about that, you know, what you let in because it manifests and it becomes reality. Everyone's reality is so different. Um, that's why it's so important, I believe, to have a strong foundation, you know, yes. and, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, I don't, I don't do that myself. Right. I mean, I go through it, you know, where I have moments of doubt and where I'm, you know, I'm like, all right, I need to go read my book, you know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So it happens to the best of us. And I think if you have a strong foundation, you can get yourself out of it and bring yourself around. So my oldest is 21. And I think that that, that is something that my, I can remember my mom telling me, you need to teach her. It's okay to fail. She was a teacher for 21 years in inner city, Houston. And she just told me over and over, you need to teach them how to fail, how to be gracious in failure, and that it's okay to fail. And I think, especially in our community, so many people are so driven and so focused that we can forget that learning how to fail is just as an important lesson as learning wow. how to succeed. It's the best. Failing is the best because it's how you try and how yes. you learn. And yes. that's one of my favorites. I mean, I shouldn't have a favorite because they're all like, they're all my babies, right? Um, you can't just pick one. Right. Um, but failing is so important because it's how you learn. And it's yes. you know the biggest way to succeed because you learn to get back up again and try and keep trying until you do succeed. Right. Um, you know, and I'll say through this whole experience, you know, um, my kids have learned, or I hope I've showed them that, if you try something, you know, you can succeed and you just have to keep pushing forward. Don't be afraid to try. Yes. You know? And you know, the questions come, mom, are you scared? What if no one buys your book? How many books have you sold? I'm like, I'm not even worried about it. And you know, they're all worried. They want to know how many, what's going on, what's happening. I'm like, just let it be. It's, yeah. I, you know, it's not about that for me. You know, I really, I really want to get this message in to children's hands. I really Absolutely. do. It's an important thing to me. So, um, and you know, the real, the real motivation behind all of it, to be honest. So that's amazing. Well, I know that you have a big passion for, especially getting this into the hand of foster care families. So yeah. I would love, um, I am a foster care mama. Okay. So, um, I, we recently had a beautiful little girl in our, in our home till she was about five months old and oh. I miss her. I still think about her. And, um, so I would just love to hear where your passion for foster care from comes from. Absolutely. Well, thank you for doing that. Um, you know, I know that in Arizona, 
you know, there's about 19,000 children currently in yep. foster care. And we're, I would say, probably third in the U.S., right behind California and Texas yep. in terms of numbers. And, um, you know, what really got me thinking about it is I spent the early half of my better years um, dancing in a ballet company. And I'm going way back and giving you way more info than you're going to need, but I'm going to tell you why. This is where it came from. Um, I spent years dancing in women's prisons and, and nursing homes and, and making people feel good. And as I started to think about, you know, my children using this and who could really use that, it was, you know, the foundation of children maybe don't hear that message, you know, as frequently as they would like to hear it. And then also kind of going way back in my family history, well, not too far, my dad was adopted. Um, and my grandmother actually was an orphan. Um, so back before foster uh, families even existed, it was really, you know, the churches that supported orphans, you know, especially during the depression. Yep. Um, so, you know, there was that family connection, you know, um, as well. And just thinking about my own father and the experience he had, you know, it really just brought to me, you know, to the forefront of who could benefit the most from hearing this. You know, those poor kids are shuffled from here to there, and they do get that love and support from their foster families. But, you know, and I know they do, otherwise they wouldn't be fostering. But it's after that, you know, how can they have that reassurance that, you know, with something um, to hang on to that can make them feel good. And Absolutely. I, I really want this book to do that for them. And that's the most important thing is that they get that message. What are the things that I wanted to hear when I was younger or that I did hear, you know, from my own mother? Um, you know, I, I want those kids to be able to hear it too. So it was really just letting them know, hey guys, you know, here it is. Okay, take this with you, right? Put this in your suitcase or whatever you have and take it with you. Take it with you everywhere. Yes. Um, you know, and I, not to think that this book is the solve for it. I know it's not, I'm not a crazy lady. I mean, maybe I am, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I just really thought that that would be the best place, um, you know, to start. Absolutely. Um, it's interesting that you said prison ministry, because, um, that is another thing I'm incredibly passionate about is, um, really, really seeing people who, especially that are coming out and trying to, um, you know, get their life back that, that our society kind of wakes up a little bit to how hard that is. Yes. And, um, we have a very special family that we just, um, helped as Scottsdale moms. And, um, you know, the reality of they didn't even have a pillow. They didn't have cups. They didn't have, I don't think we think about that. You know, if, if you're not going back to live with a family, you have nothing and everything is stacked up against you. And I think, you know, foster care is a lot the same way as, as much as you try to love these children and help the, the families reunite and build and build and build there's loss and there's loss there where if you can speak truth into their life, that, they are loved and they are beautiful and they are worthy. They're so worthy and they are so special and they were created um, for a purpose that when you can start speaking that into them, I think that that's everything, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's their lives, you know, 80%, I think about 80% of, you know, of, of men and women um, you know, that are in prison have spent time somewhere in the foster right. system, you know, and they've, they're, they're in the foster system for a reason. They've experienced right. some type of neglect or, you know, abuse. Um, <laughs> so cute. This is Sebastian. This is my young Hi. 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 Good morning or good afternoon. <laughs> It is. It is. Can you go that way? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Being a working mom, right? <laughs> I mean, it happens. Trust me. I got dogs, kids, husbands, things going in and out. <laughs> we do. We multitask. Oh, no. We do it, right? <laughs> That's right. We're Scottsdale moms. That's what we're about. 
That's what we do. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, um, yeah, this is amazing. Oh, yeah. And I, I really, I cannot wait for more people to get this book in their hands. And thank you for, thanks for taking a gift that was such a personal gift and giving it to the rest of us moms as an opportunity to speak truth to our kiddos. That's really well, thank special. You. Thank really you so special. much. Um, I'll just share, it's on Amazon. I it am is. running um, a book program called Buy a Book, Donate a Book. Um, I don't think I explained that yet, but anyone that purchases a paperback book or even a Kindle version, I'm flipping that and turning it right around and, and donating it. Um, so I'm focused right now on Arizona Children's Association um, as my partner. They have a really large reach in the area. Um, so, you know, Scottsdale moms, please, you know, if you want to give back, this is a great way to do it. Um, you know, go on Amazon, add it to your cart for the week. It's right there under Power Up Children's Books. And just know that you're, you're also helping get that, you know, positive message of motivation and encouragement right into those kiddos' hands. So... And I appreciate That's amazing. it. That's amazing. And if you'll send me the link on Amazon, I will put it in the comments. That way everyone can find it really easily. Um, yeah. We're so thankful. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you for your time. Yeah. And um, yes, Scottsdale moms, be sure run out and get a copy, support by local, support another yeah. mom. And yeah. especially a mama that's given to, um, to kiddos in our area to make, make the world a better place. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thanks for your time, Erin. And best wishes with the book. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. You.